Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Today Shin and I will give a deep dive and uh, introduction to the data protection working group. My name is Zhang Chen. Next slide, please. I am a software engineer from Google. Hello everyone. My name is uh, Xin Yang. I work at VMware in the cloud storage team. I'm also a co-chair in Kubernetes Six Storage and co-chair of the data protection wing group with Xiang Qian. Thank you, Xin. Next slide, please. Today, we are gonna go through a couple of topics. Uh, we first, we'll reiterate a little bit what is the motivation of uh, this data protection working group. And then we go a little bit glance over who are the organizations that get involved in this effort. And then we talk about what we think about data protection it is in the Kubernetes context. And then what are the existing building blocks to support data protection in Kubernetes? And what, what are we missing for the building blocks to support this feature better? And how to get it involved? Next slide, please. Um, there, were there were not sufficient fundamental Kubernetes building blocks to easily allow users to do backup and snapshot of the stateful applications as of today. Day one operations for st uh, deployment, management, and rollout of stateful workload are well supported. Uh, there are volume operations, either through CSI driver or entry drivers. Or, and they are workload APIs, deployment state for set, et cetera, to support that. With more and more stateful workload moving to Kubernetes, uh, the desire of providing fundamental building blocks to allow users protect the data is getting hit. hit it. GitOps could potentially be used for rolling back of stateless workloads. It is still insufficient for stateful workloads as the data cannot easily be managed by GitOps. This working group has been built, targeted at designing and implementing Kubernetes native building blocks to allow backup windows to quickly build backup solutions for the users. That's to support the day two operations for data protection specifically. And uh, this working group has two major stakeholders, SIG apps and SIG storage, and potentially SIG node. Next slide, please. So who are all involved? We have a bi-weekly meeting, and those are just probably incomplete list of companies that are supporting this initiative. We saw a lot of contributions from storage companies, cloud providers, backup vendors, et cetera, et cetera. And thanks to all the contributors, uh, we are making good progress over there. Next slide, please. So what exactly is data protection in, our in Kubernetes? The main purpose of data protection is to make sure that an application and its data can be recovered to a previously preserved state. We call it backup for the state after any corruption or losses. Uh, that can include uh, badly rolled out software caused data corruption, or it can be disaster recovery when you lost the whole data center, et cetera, et cetera. In the Kubernetes context, it mainly involves two pieces of data. One is the API resources that describes your, your workload in the, in the Kubernetes cluster. And the other is the persistent volume data that application uses. This is a compli complicated and layered problem. The, uh, likely in, including backup and risk recovery at a couple of levels, persistent volume level, application level, and the cost level to satisfy different goals. 
Next slide, please. So part of this working group's charter or emissions is to define a list of Kubernetes native construction constructs to enable those enable protection at different levels. At the volume level, the the um, volume snapshot features, and we're looking to into volume backup features. Uh, volume restore, in the application level, we are looking to define what constitutes in your application and how to you quiet and quiet an application such that application consistent snapshot can be achieved. She will give more details later on. I'm just glancing through this concept. The cluster level, uh, what if I want to back up the whole cluster and uh, be able to restore into a different, a completely different cluster? Next slide, please. Here, this diagram shows you a pretty typical stateful application backup workflow. So a user generally starts a backup, either via COI or something. Uh, it, it has two missions to do. One is to back up the Kubernetes resources and get them archived or exported to an external, externally managed storage, typically object storage systems. And then the other piece, the data backup. As you may, may aware of, some of the stateful workloads like MySQL, uh, Postgres, Redis, et cetera, et cetera, they have this so-called application native data dump. So what they're capable of is an CLI tool, which allows you to download this, the current state of the application into a local file. Uh, and this local file can be later on used for restoration. In this case, if the, the, if the such application has a native data dump, a user can choose to use that native dump and export the dumped file into the remote bucket, object bucket. If there's not, there's a con the controller, controller coordinate back for backup workflow typically have, will happen. What does it typically quiet the application and take a volume snapshot or, the, or backup using the Kubernetes construct and unquiet the application. The reason why you want to quiet your replication is to make sure during the process of backup, the data is being maintained in the consistent in the application level. Next slide, please. The restore workflow is the reverse. User starts to restore, it starts to import the backup, including both uh, the Kubernetes resource piece as well as the data piece. And the PVC data needs most likely be handled specially. Uh, PVCs and the PV data restoration, again, it branches into two pieces. It is a, the, if the backup turns out to be a native application dump, then use the native application tools to restore from the DOM. Otherwise, just rehydrate the PVC from the worm snapshot or worm backup. Next slide, please. So we talk about the workflows. So what, what exactly is there as of today to support this workflows? For application, there are rich sets of workload APIs, state for set, deployment, daemon set, et cetera. There's also an application CRD, which groups a set of resources together and bundle them as an application. The, in the storage piece, we have volume snapshot feature, which is already G80 in 1.21. Next slide, please. So how does this work? How does this building blocks fit into the workflow? As you might see the green box over there, workload APIs and SIG application, uh, SIG apps application CRDs can help the backup system understand what are the Kubernetes resources this backup should contain. And next slide, please. The William snapshot feature majorly sits in 
uh, when the the, in the controller or coordinate workflow, where the controller can literally create a QM snapshot object, and this will trigger a snapshot over the system of the quiet cook is called. And during, uh, next slide, please. And the installation in the restoration workflow, the same thing. A worm snapshot can be directly used to rehydrate PVC from, from it. Next slide, please. We talk about existing. So what are, what are missing? This is just a short list of missing features. We're looking to design a build. William backup, William snapshots in some of the vendors, they are, uh, they are they're stored externally in some of the vendors actually they're locally stored in the primary storage system. Um, backup repository, where do we put our, where do we put our backup manifests? Quiz and quiz hooks, how do you trigger a command in an in application such that it can quiz itself and unquiz itself? Application snapshot and backup, and this is basically an application level of extraction, including controller that allows you to do uh, application consistency snap consistent snapshot and backup. And there are more. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a slightly busy slide. If you take a look, uh, the boxes in orange are the missing blocks, and boxes in yellow are the ones that are under design or work in progress. Boxes in green or blue, uh, boxes in, uh, in green are existing ones. So the volume backup, just like volume snapshot, fits into the picture of control coordinated backup process. And the backup repository serves as the uh, as the, the the storage place location for when you try to expose the backup. An application backup it's a higher level construct organize all this and coordinating all this uh, process. Next slide, please. In the restore workflow, a pretty similar thing. Backup repository this time serves as a a a source of the backup to be pulled from. And there's a COSI cap, which is to build a generic interface to all the object providers, to object providers, which is in progress. Uh, application restore, in, in this case, plays a role of orchestrating the restoration process uh, in the, from the application level. And volume backup again falls into the same box as volume snapshot. I will not go too much detail into this, and I will give hand it over to Shin to cover the details of those missing blocks. Shin, please. Thanks, Shin. So I'm going to talk about what other missing building blocks. The first missing building block we identified is volume backup. We need this because we need to extract data to our secondary storage. We've already got a volume snapshot API, uh, but there's no explicit definition made in the design to have snapshots stored on a different backup device separate from the primary storage. For some cloud providers, a snapshot is actually a backup that is uploaded to an object store in the cloud. However, for most other storage vendors, a snapshot is locally stored alongside the volume on the primary storage. So without a volume backup API, backup vendors can handle different uh, snapshot semantics differently. For storage systems that take local snapshots, you use the volume snapshot API to take the snapshot and then have a data mover to upload the snapshot to a backup target. For storage systems that upload snapshots to an object store automatically, the snapshot can be treated as a backup. Alternatively, Backup vendor can also move the snapshot to a different backup target. We just started discussions about this in the working group. In this diagram, volume backup is next to volume snapshot. We put it in an orange box to indicate that it is a uh, missing Kubernetes component. We have started discussions about it, but there's no concrete design yet. The next missing building block is CBT and change file lists. 
um, without the CVT change block tracking and change the file list, backup vendors have to do full backups all the time. This is not space efficient, takes longer to complete and needs more bandwidth. Another use case for CVT is snapshot-based replication, where you take snapshots periodically and they replicate it to another site for disaster recovery purpose. So what are the alternatives? Without CBT, we can either do full backups or we can call each storage API individually to retrieve CBT, which is highly inefficient. We are currently doing design for the CBT feature. As shown in this diagram, the CBT box is next to volume backup and volume snapshot as it is used to make backups more efficiently. It is a yellow box now, as we are currently working on the design. The third missing building block is the backup repository. Backup repository is a location or repo to store data. This can be an object store in the cloud, on-prem storage location, or a NFS-based solution. There are two types of data to be backed up that we need at the restore time. The first one is Kubernetes cluster metadata. The second one is snapshot data. We need to back them up and restore them in a backup repository. Currently, there is a project for object store backup repository. That is uh, object bucket provisioning or COSI. This introduces object storage Kubernetes API to support orchestration of object store operations for Kubernetes workloads. This brings object storage as the first class citizen in Kubernetes, just like file and block storage. It also introduces container object storage interface or COSI as a set of gRPC interfaces for provisioning object buckets. Kubernetes COSI is already a sub-project in six storage and it is a pretty active project. It has weekly design meetings and stand-up meetings. It is targeting RFR in 1.22 release. Uh, as shown in this diagram, COSI is in a yellow box, indicating it is a working progress Kubernetes component. This is an object store backup repository. It can be used to export backup and store the data. And uh, let's look at the restore. COSI is uh, used to import backup data at the restore time. The next missing building block is the volume populator. Currently, we can only create a PVC for another PVC or for an, a volume snapshot. But what if the backup data is stored in a backup repository, such as an object store? The volume populator feature allows us to provision a PVC for an external data source, such as a backup repository. In addition, it allows us to dynamically provision a PVC, having data populated from the backup repository and honor the wait for first consumer volume binding mode during restore to ensure that volume is placed at the right node where pod is scheduled. There is an any volume data source alpha feature gate, which was introduced in 1.18. Um, design and prototyping for volume populated implementation are in progress. New repos are created. One repo is for shared library for use by volume populators. The other repo is for the controller responsible for validating PVC data sources. This is targeting beta in 1.22 release. As shown in this diagram, the volume populator is needed at restore time. Volume populator is in a yellow box indicating that it is a work in progress Kubernetes component. It is used to rehydrate PVC from a backup repository during restore. The next one is quiet and unquiet hooks. We need these hooks to quiet application before taking a snapshot and unquiet afterwards 
to ensure application consistency. We investigated how QuietS and OnQuest hooks work in different types of workloads. They have very different semantics. We want to design a generic mechanism to run commands in containers, but we want to mention that application-specific semantics is out of scope. We currently have a proposal called Container Notifier. Copy submitted and it is being reviewed. Let's take a closer look of the container notifier cap. This cap proposes to introduce a mechanism to notify a selected set of pods to run pre-specified commands defined in line in those pods specification. This is achieved by adding an optional notifier field in the container to allow users to specify commands or signals which can be executed or sent. Introducing a core API object pod notification to trigger a specific command signal specified in a pod. We plan to introduce the changes in multiple phases. In phase one, we propose to add an optional field notifiers, which is a list of container notifiers into container, add a container notifier handler, which defines a command, add a core API pod notification, which defines a request to trigger the execution of container notifier in a pod, and add a single trusted controller, a pod notification controller, to watch pod notification resources execute the commands and update their statuses. And in phase two, we propose to add an API called a notification and a controller which processes notification resources. In the notification spec, there is a label selector to select pods. There is also a pod selection policy. If policy is all pods, it means the controller will keep processing all pods matching the label until the notification object is deleted. If policy is pre-existing pods only, it means the controller will only process pods created before the notification object is created. In phase two, we also propose to add an inline pod definition for signals and allow the API object to send a request to trigger delivering of those signals. And also move logic in the pod notification controller into Kubelet so that Kubelet will be watching pod notification objects, runs the commands and update statuses of pod notifications. In phase three, a probe may be added if needed as an inline pod definition to verify the signal is delivered or whether the command is run and the results in desired outcome. Let's take a look at this diagram. So continuity notifier is mainly used at a backup time to do quiet before taking a snapshot and on quest afterwards. The next one is consistent group snapshot. So we talked about the container notifier proposal, which tries to ensure application consistency. What if you can't acquire the application or if the application quest is too expensive, so you want to do it less frequently, but still want to be able to do a, a take a crash consistent snapshot more frequently. Also an application may require the snapshots from multiple volumes to be taken at the same point in time. That's when consistent group snapshot comes into the picture. There's a cap on volume group and group snapshot. It proposes to introduce a new volume group CRD that groups multiple volumes together and a new group snapshot CRD that supports taking a snapshot of all volumes in the group to ensure right order consistency. This cap is being reviewed. So let's look at this uh, diagram here. We don't have content notifier to do quiz here, but we have a consistent group snapshot here that facilitates the creation of a snapshot of multiple volumes in the same group to ensure right order consistency. We have snapshot APIs for individual volumes, but what about protecting a stateful application? There is a cap submitted that proposes a Kubernetes API that defines the notion of stateful applications. 
and defines how to run operations on those stateful applications, such as snapshot, backup, and restore. This is still in a very early design stage. In this diagram, application backup handles the backup of a stateful application. It can leverage Container Notifier to do quiet and use Cozy as the backup repository. Similarly, here we have application restore that handles the restore of a stateful application. So these are all the missing building blocks that we have identified and are working on. Next, I'm going to talk about how to get involved. As discussed in previous slides, this working group is working on identifying missing functionalities in supporting data production in Kubernetes and trying to figure out how to fill those gaps. We are also working on a white paper on data production workflow. We have biweekly meetings on Wednesdays. If you are interested, please join our meetings. We also have a mailing list and a Slack channel as shown here. This is the end of the session. Thank you all for attending. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you.